Empire. With former Capitals defenseman Carl Alzer, I'm AP hockey writer Steve Wino, and we are joined by former NHL.com Capitals correspondent Katie Brown, live from Montana. Katie, thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Um, let, let's start with the, the bad news. We'll get to plenty of, of, of stories later. Next week, we'll have Brooks Orpik on, fresh graduate Brooks Orpik on, uh, and, and we'll talk some kind of Capitals, ex-Capitals guys around the playoffs and those sort of things. But uh, as we were taping last week, Carl, we talked about the, the Tom Wilson injury, and we we're like, well, maybe it's not an ACL. It was an ACL. He had had <laughs> surgery the day before. We found out after uh, this is a, a six- to eight-month recovery uh, just, I, I know you haven't dealt with that particular injury, but you just, what are your thoughts on, on, on this and, and Tom missing what's at least going to be the first month of the season, if not more? Well, it was interesting the, the way that it was injured, right? Like, I think we all know it was from that, that collision into the boards when Mantha was also coming in. And so it's kind of strange to see an ACL go that way. I mean, the, the impact yeah. that must have happened, or the weird jarring motion that must have happened was, was, must have been pretty violent, I guess, inside the knee. So, pretty uh pretty crazy and yeah there was there was no tom wilson coming back uh no there was clearly <laughs> it's i think it's it's weird sometimes those injuries can be like uh you don't really have a ton of pain but you just have zero strength right and there's nothing you can do you feel like you 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 should be out there but when it comes down to it you can't can't do anything so six to eight months absolutely brutal uh hopefully he's uh i i would imagine he's got a pretty good program that's going to help him get back but but just awful and you know and and oh I got to correct myself so I think last time we talked I may have said that Backstrom has had this would be possibly a third surgery but no I think he's only he's only had the he's only had the one yeah he's only had the yeah, one yeah. yeah so if he does do another surgery or whatever they're thinking then it would be a second so I I gotta make sure that that I I have that state the record. For the record, yeah, that's yes. only been one. <laughs> it's, only, it's only been one. Uh, um, I, I, I'll ask Katie this: as, as someone with a bad knee, um, I, I know, I know, I know you've had not have a, a torn ACL, but how, how bad is this? What's the recovery like from some of these sort of leg injuries? Because you've, um, you've had these before, and you know Tom Wilson very well from having covered this team. Um, my sister tore her ACL um, playing like high school basketball, and she, yeah, it took her. I don't know, that was a long time ago, but I mean it it was it was rough for her because like you just want to get back out there but speaking to like the randomness of like the injury that it didn't look like something that would cause that much damage um i think it was like super bowl sunday two years ago i was walking back um to my friend's house in whitefish which is like the ski town up here and the the sidewalks are not always like in clear condition and i was just we were just walking and i slipped on some ice and I actually came down on my left hand and my right um, my right hand was in my pocket. And the thing that got injured was my labrum. I tore my labrum just by like falling and landing, like just whatever jarring motion, like Carl, like you said, kind of like it just, yeah. And so I had to have sh- shoulder surgery that summer and it took like a good six months. Well, it's something unsuspecting. Your body's yeah. not ready for it, you know, and it just yeah. takes a second to when you're not braced or... You know, it's it's weird yeah. how that happens too, because they always say like when you're, if you're, if you're really intoxicated, and and you do I wasn't. Yeah, exactly. If you would have been, you been there. Just would have been like going with the motions, and nothing would have happened. Probably. Yeah. 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 It was it's just weird. weird. I think it was just like the angle of my yeah. hand being in my pocket and the way I came down. Like it was just uh. so weird. Carl, how, how did you the the, the 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 sports hernia core muscle thing? How did that happen for you? Um, you know, they usually say that it's something kind of wear and tear over yeah. time, but I remembered clearly it was a play. Um, and it was my, my buddy, Ryan white, who was coming up the boards and then he cut back and I just went to go stop. And, and I don't know if I was a little bit too, too wide in my stop. And, um, I, you just, just felt it right away that it was, that it was over <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and then trying to survive after that. So sometimes those things can just creep up over time. And then occasionally it's, a it's emotion like that. So that, that just was the way for me. But uh, speaking of shoulder, I, I had a, a t- uh, torn, what the heck did they call it? Um, capsule in my shoulder from playing uh, a game of hacky sack that went wrong with my, my buddy. There was a big group of us. Yeah. Big group of us in a tournament uh, that we were all playing hacky sack as warm up, <laughs> And he kicked the ball at me like, 
like ridiculously hard. It was stupid. He was trying to trying to be a thing. I thought he, he must have thought he was trying to be cool. I don't know. So I picked it up and I launched it at him and he dodged it and then charged at me. Like, I don't know where the whole <laughs> team is right there. So I wrapped him up and like turned and spun him and then went down. But same thing, like my my shoulder hit or my elbow hit the, the ground first and just went back and and tore the capsule the, the day before the tournament started. And so it's those weird stupid things that we do sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like my dad tore his his calf playing tag with me. You know, we just it's the things that that you shouldn't be injured from end up hitting us the worst. So yeah. you just I don't know. It's just weird. It's it sucks when it happens, but it does happen. Really weird, yeah. I, I, I had I had a buddy who who punctured a spleen just like in college wrestling with buddies and I'd wound up going to the emergency room from that. But Katie, didn't you fall off a horse and break your ankle too? Um, well, I broke my ankle like in the saddle. It's kind of a long story. Like my weight, because when you're well, we only like, have like four minutes to tell the story. So, well, okay. So if you ever if you've ever ridden a horse, um, like all your weight's kind of in your ankles, like it's sort of part of your balance. And I was riding out in this open field, and my horse kind of like shifted weight, and it shifted all of my weight into my one side, and I just heard my ankle like crunch, basically. Yeah, I just that's had to, not what you want. No. I just had to have bone spur or surgery because of like that. I've had arthritis in it, and I have screws in it. It's a bad situation. But. I, I, so Tom told us, and then Tom was skating like right before the, the the season ended. I'm curious, both your thoughts, Katie, first on how insane Tom Wilson is to now that we know that it was a torn ACL that he was thinking of playing in this. Because I want Katie's opinion as as from our standpoint, and then I want Carl on your thoughts because knowing a player who wants to get out there, but knowing you can't do it, and kind of what your limit is in that situation. That that brings to mind like I last year when I was I was out in Glacier, I was hiking, and I twisted my ankle the day before. But there was this hike I really wanted to do, even though my ankle was like clearly messed up i still did like a 10 mile hike but like you just get like focused on something that you want to do and you're willing to like kind of push through it yeah it's it's the playoffs right so it's the playoffs right i just had this conversation the other day with a friend who they they asked you know how that how that works and injury and stuff like that and all you're looking for for from the doctor is i'm not going to injure this further and if if you can get that then it's then it's strictly mental, right? It's can I can I battle through the pain enough that that I can play and I can be valuable to the team? Um, if if that's a yes, then yeah, you you go for it. You do whatever you can. And, and the nice thing is that the the team is willing to do a, a, a lot more during the playoffs to have people play, right? From from your your Tylenol cocktails to your you know what you can use to free. Whatever you can shoot it up. <laughs> Everyone knows the stories of. Uh, I think the football players and their lines uh, for their tordal shots before before games. You know, it's it's things like that 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 you try and do, or you you freeze the area around it, the nerves around it to to lessen the pain, and and you're you're just hopeful that that you can get through it and that it lasts the entire game. But yeah, if 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 it was possible for him to to get out there and play and and benefit the team, then yeah, you you go ahead and try it. I remember seeing Brooks like do it with a I think it was a grade two MCL tear and yep. and I was like like what's this guy doing like there's no chance that he's going to be able to play and at the time he hadn't missed a game in like 300 400 games or something like that so I'm like this is you know it's pretty impressive that he's doing it he went out there and looked pretty good um but you know that was the decision for for the team is you know is he good enough that that you know he's better than someone we can call up and so yeah I don't know, like a, a, four, a 50% Tom, is that better than, you know, whoever's going to take his place? It's it's up for debate in the playoffs, you know, you don't, you, you got to be, you got to be careful with that. So it seemed like that was a situation. Yeah, and it did seem like like he could make it worse. And, and like, instead of just being a torn ACL, if it's multiple ligaments, then you're talking about him being out a full year. Um, yeah. Speaking of, yeah, and that, right, like this is like, like, you could absolutely, like you want to be in there, right, Katie? But like, you can't make it worse. Yeah, you can. Like, yeah, like it's, it, and the knee is such like a, a like a it's structured and it's like kind of like the shoulder like that it's like you know one it's if it's not stable like you can definitely make it yeah they all they all rely they on each help. other right you can't have yeah. you, if, if one of them's gone then the other ones get overstressed and you don't yeah it's, it's yeah. it turns from a six to eight month month injury to a 12 12 months you know yeah. and there's there's no point of doing that but you know it's it's a, a tough pill to swallow for anybody like you want to go on that hike and you want to play on the playoffs right it's, it's the way mine, it works mine wasn't quite as bad i made it through but 
<laughs> no, and I know just no six to eight month recovery from that. But uh, we were talking about ACLs. Uh, Chase Young from the Commanders has come back from a torn ACL. Uh, listen to the John Kime report also on Empire Media for more about Chase Young. When we come back on Oz Caps, uh, we're going to talk about a, a, an injury to an ex Capitals guy, Andre Burkowski, uh, in the playoffs right now. Some other kind of Capitals stuff around the playoffs. And later on, Katie will, will get to do Carl's stupid questions. Welcome back to All's Caps with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner and former NHL.com Capitals correspondent Katie Brown. I'm AP hockey writer Steve Wino. Uh, enough of Tom Wilson's knee. We'll, we'll worry about that later. And, and uh, later this offseason, get into what the Capitals might be able to do about that. But in the playoffs right now, we've got a handful of ex-Capitals guys around. Uh, Andre Burakovsky uh, was scratched for, for Game 2 of the Avalanche Western Conference Final against Edmonton. Uh, Carl, you saw that the other night. Blocked a shot. He was limping around the arena yesterday. I'm sure you know how that feels to to, to block a shot and not be able to play. Yeah, it uh, sucks. <laughs> it's, it's not fun, <laughs> and it, it, so much depends on where that shot's taken, right? If uh, you have so many pressure points in the skate that if it's pushing on the wrong spot, it it's just excruciating pain. And like we had said, you do you do as much as you can to uh, to mitigate the pain, but you don't really freeze a foot. You know, you kind of need right. to feel your foot to skate. So it's uh, it's tough. But but I when I saw that happen uh, and uh, uh, the game was over, I texted Berkey and I you know because he's not really known as as a shot blocker, right? And I send him a message just saying you know how how awesome that was. It's huge huge to see it and and. Uh, and he says he says he should stop blocking shots. It's not in his game. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe not, but the rest of the guys really appreciate that. And, you know, even if the if if people don't really take too much notice, the the team appreciates that. So hopefully we see him back soon. But you know, that Bouchard can absolutely hum the puck. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some damage in there. Yeah, Evan Bouchard, I forget who on the broadcast said like he shoots the puck as hard as any defenseman in the league. And I thought about it for a second. I'm like. Does he really? And then I was like, well, Zane Char might not be playing anymore. So he, and Shea Weber's not playing anymore. So yeah. Evan Bouchard might be that, right? Yeah, I've seen him just freaking wail it. Like, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, we don't know how how hard everybody shoots, right? We only get to see yeah. a select few shoot it every year, and and so it's hard to it's hard to match that. Like, we never got to see Milan Urchina shoot the puck when you know with a right. with a radar gun, and and we all knew he could shoot the puck hard. There's lots of guys that can that can let it fly, but, but they just never get the opportunity in the all-star game, which is why I'm a big fan of every team doing some sort of skills. I love that. Stuff. Yeah. I think it would be awesome. You know, Jason Chimera holding the record for fastest skater in Edmonton, <laughs> yeah. you know, unofficial fastest uh, lap time. So we'd love to be able to, to see that and have it be more official. So, I mean, I, that's, that's, that's my opinion. I don't know what you think about that, Katie, spe- especially when you get some characters too, like Chimera, who you would have, you know, yep. had some had some time with. I think it's <laughs> I think it's fun. We get to see see uh, what what some of the individual skills are that that you only get to see during the All Star game. Yeah, no, that that's fun because like it's almost like the like the combine that they yeah. have where you can just like kind of do like a skills test and see where you're at. Like, because you might not, you know, if you're not like an All Star game guy, <laughs> then you would might never know. Yeah, that's exactly. The, that's the puck and player tracking, though. Now we will now know at some point soon, probably starting next season, how fast guys are skating and how fast guys are shooting, and that's cool. That's cool shit, right? Like, like to know that kind of stuff. Absolutely, I think it's sweet too to see, like, because uh, I was always a big fan of when the, you do fastest skater do one lap forward, one lap backwards, right? Because some some, <laughs> some guys can't skate backwards. It's the truth. But like, they cannot pivot and right. skate backwards, and so I think it'd be sweet to be able to see who can do it both. Uh, both ways. <laughs> I, I love that you brought up Milan Urchina, but Katie, I'm, I'm wondering what what is your favorite Carl Alsner story from from covering mm-hmm. the team? Is there it, do you remember anything from those times of I guess maybe 2013 on to 2017? I I was trying to think about this, and one thing that I do remember was like I think they were about to get the Cavs were about to play the Bruins, and Brayden Holpe had this like insane winning streak or I don't know if it was a shutout streak but it was like an insane winning streak against the Bruins and I remember going up to Carl and just like asking about that and he goes he goes are you gonna ask him that and I was like yeah why and he goes if you care about us at all you will not ask him that <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why I remember that so clearly but <laughs> that's like that's the, that's the shutout for a goalie thing like if yeah. you're in there you don't want to bring it to their attention you know they're already probably thinking about it but you yeah. don't really want to bring it to their attention like we can talk about it here and it doesn't, right. 
it doesn't matter. But when you actually go up to the person and say it, then it's like, you know, that's like the the uh, Tampa Bay thing, right? The that they haven't haven't lost a back to back games in 18, 18 tries in the playoffs. Like, you know that they're thinking about it, but yeah. all of a sudden we bring it to light, and yeah, it just yeah. it, it seems like, like we've messed something up, right? It's so fight club, you don't talk about fight club. yeah, exactly. It's it's kind of funny that way, but I don't know. Did you? I, of all the of all the the guys that you talked to in Washington, was there anyone in particular that you really enjoyed talking to or felt weird talking to? I know some guys aren't always that that open to answering things, but I'm curious from your perspective what you thought. Um, well, no, I was thinking about this last night too, um, and I remember it was like if there was like a bad game, everyone would just be at your saw, Carl, huh. and then or Matt Niskanen, yeah. right? Or Niskanen, yeah, and then um, and then just like practice or like morning skates, like Jay Beagle and like Nate Schmidt, like those guys were always, were always just like <laughs> someone to talk to. Yeah, I, I what I liked about Niski is that he he really seemed to take time with his answers, right? Like he didn't just the question didn't get asked and then he just blurted out an answer. He mm-hmm. he thought about it and and it was at sometimes awkward silence, but but you knew that he cared and I, that's the way i felt with him in the car too i drove <laughs> drove to all the games with him and i'd ask him a question and and there'd be silence for five seconds i'm like did he hear that should i ask it again and then all of a sudden his answer would come out and i'm like oh okay he's he actually is processing what i've just said versus versus me sometimes where i just just start talking with a few filler words before i can figure out what i want to say right so niski i think niski was was a great uh, great person to talk at least he seemed like he was a great person to talk to uh, no offense to you, Carl. I, th- I think my favorite people, in addition to you and like Joel Ward, I think Matt Hendricks still might be my favorite guy from oh that gosh, era Matt to Hendricks. deal with. Right, Katie? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wasn't a beauty. There, too. Wasn't, wasn't there that whole thing like he got, what happened to his eye that time? I'm. This was like 10, almost 10 years ago. During so the HBO know. thing, right? Where he had like bloodshot eye or something? No, yes. it was like was after it? that though. Yeah, it was after that. I have to try to find. I think I wrote a story about it, but it was a long time ago. I don't remember. The, the, I don't some weird, some weird stuff. Happened. Some weird stuff Wait. happened during those times. Did Dennis Weidman had the compartment syndrome situation? Oh, you remember that? Yeah. Yes, that was scary. Very scary. Really scary. I didn't even realize until like recently how they basically have to just like cut you open. They have and, to and leave you open. and leave you cut open. Yeah, they have to. I didn't even really realize that until like I saw a picture of him. I was like, oh, okay, that's yeah. He was filleted right open. Yeah. That's so gross. So we have to get him to come on and talk about it at some point because it if he was... wants to, because I, I, I don't, I don't, there are, there are some injuries guys have had that they're so traumatic that they don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. I'm not sure how he feels about it, but I, it was, at the time I remember it was because he hadn't been with the team for very long. And then he ended up being in the hospital for like seven days straight or something yeah. like that. And we we're looking after his dog for him and <laughs> barely knew him, but we, we got to know each other pretty good after that when, someone goes through a, a something traumatic like like I don't think you ever expect to be filleted open from the knee to the hip <laughs> you know it's kind of gross no and I my, my my Dennis Weidman is I think it was a 2012 all-star game when it was supposed to be Ovi and Weidman in Ottawa and then Ovi got suspended for charging I think it was Zabinic Mahalik of Pittsburgh mm. he got suspended <laughs> so he was suspended like right before the all-star break so he was like screw this I'm not going so it was yeah. just me and Dennis Weidman hanging out in Ottawa for three days I was like his personal reporter for <laughs> d- all-star Dennis Weidman because who would have thought Dennis Weidman would have been an all-star but he was that year what's the thing like Wides? he he's a really really good player he's one of the best passers that I that I played with and he was he knew the game really well you know the only knock on him was that his at a time where foot speed was becoming a, a big thing is that he liked to slow the game down instead of you know run and gun and people people would always say oh no he's he's too slow he's playing the game too slow this and that but but he controlled the game like he yep. was he was fun to watch because he he decided what what was being done on the ice you know and not many guys can do that so i love i love that about dennis and my favorite line that he ever said to me um, cause he knew how much I liked going off the glass and out to, to relieve pressure. <laughs> he'd always say he, he'd rather throw the puck up the middle and, and give somebody a, a great a chance, chance on net than ever go glass and out. <laughs> and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, well, then me and you would work perfectly. Cause I'll just pass it over to you and let you do something with it. And then I'll stay in the middle <laughs> waiting for that turnover. <laughs> That, that, that sounds like a perfect pairing. Um, when we come back on, on, on All's Caps, Katie Brown becomes the latest victim of Carl's Stupid Questions. 
Welcome back to All's Caps with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner and former NHL.com correspondent and current sports editor of the Daily Interlake in, in Montana. We should kind of plug that. Uh, Katie Brown, and I'm AP Hockey writer Steve Wino, and we had a lot of hockey talk for, for a long time, and now, after months of, of talking hockey, just basically Carl and I, the return of Carl's Stupid Questions after a long, a, a long pause, and now it's back. Carl's Stupid Questions with Katie Brown. Yes, so excited. I... Uh... Just a heads up, I have an unstable internet connection. It's telling me right now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, why not? I don't have to put you on the spot and all of a sudden take over the. Uh... I don't have any questions. I, I, I've asked you, I've asked you questions for decades. This is you say you're the one who wants to ask questions now. So this is your this is your segment. Yes. Okay. Well, let's let's do it. Um, all right, Katie. Uh, six questions. We gave you the rundown already. So mm-hmm. just have fun with it. Nothing crazy. Um, very curious, actually, about the first one since you're in Montana. Um, what do you prefer? sunrises or sunsets Ooh, that's close because it depends on where you are for the sunrise like if you're in the park and you because i like i'm kind of crazy i like to get up at like 4 a.m and go and catch the sunrise but we also have gorgeous sunsets here and the sun like the the western sky never really gets like dark like it's (laughs) sort of light and you might know that from looking yes but um if i had to pick i'll pick a sunset sunset there you go okay you don't have to work as hard for a sunset sunrise you got to wake up and be there for it sunset you're probably already awake right true yeah if you want to consider it that way that's a this, very this, good this point is, this, is a, this is a new question on, on cross different question yes less work going for sunsets <laughs> i like it <laughs> um all right next one is do you or can you think of a word or a phrase that is really overused something that really bugs you like for example um people being called the goat or legend, things like that. You know, that's uh, a couple of my, my pet peeves right there, but do you have anything that comes to mind hockey related or otherwise? Oh yeah. Um, my pet peeve was everyone calling anytime like a player retired or like did something, they'd be like, that guy's really classy. And I was like, everyone can't be classy. (laughs) Stop using that word. You're just not. Just too much classy, yeah. too much class going on right now. Mm-hmm. Not everyone's classy and that's okay. So what would be a good definition of someone who's classy? I don't know. You're <laughs> classy, Carl. I, I would consider you like classy, Carl. Classy Carl. Yeah. Okay. Classy Carl with a K. <laughs> classy Carl, stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the queen is kind of classy. Queen yeah. seems classy. Definitely. Yeah. We don't know what she's like behind closed doors, but she sure seems classy. That's for- I, I, I saw um, a video this morning of like some, I don't know who this guy was. He was like a attendant or something. And he was saying they were, they were walking around one summer and um, these, I don't know how long ago this was either, but these people came up and they started like saying, Oh, like, where are you from? And, you know, they, and they clearly didn't recognize they were talking to the queen. And so they ended up asking her to take a photo of them. That's really? He was taking the photo. And then later she, I don't, and I, they may have gotten a photo with her. I don't remember, but, um, but later on, she remarked to the, her staff that um, she hoped that like, she would have liked to see their friends faces back in the States when they showed them the picture and that she hoped someone would tell them who she was. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Like hanging out with the queen. They like ran into the queen. They didn't recognize her. I, not, not, this, not that I'm comparing you to the queen here, Carl, but is, is there a time where like you like being going out and not getting recognized? That, the t- sorry, a time that I like. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, like, 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 like I've talked to Gary Batman about this a little bit where there are places where he just goes and no one has any idea who he is. And yeah, after oh, yeah. kind of being in the public eye, how, like, are, do you enjoy going out where people just kind of don't bring any attention to it? Oh yeah, always. <laughs> That's. I mean, it, I don't know. For me, for me, it seems um, it seems awkward, you know. Unless it's at unless it's at a, a hockey game where right. I I kind of understand that, you know, it's a it, it makes sense. If I'm at restaurant or farmers market or something like that, it seems it seems awkward to me, right? Like I don't. However, everybody else is walking by, like like what the heck is going on here? Or at an airport where I'm in a different city and it just so happens to be a Caps fan, you know. Right. Everyone's like. Who the heck is this guy? So, so yeah, typically it's, it's nice to just do your own thing. Like I, my kids, they notice it now. Like if I go to their school to pick them up and, and someone says something you can see, especially with my daughter, she's like, like, she's like, we we're famous. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like my, I think, I think Mandy actually said it best. She's like, no, 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 Stella, you're not famous. 
your dad is a little bit famous, but not you. <laughs> and I'm like, it's it's just a weird, it's just a weird, weird thing. You don't really ever get used to it. So it makes me feel slightly awkward. Yeah. And, and, and actually, Ben Raby had texted a bunch of us last night that there, someone sent him a photo of Tom with a knee brace uh, and crutches being like, well, every, of course, he's going to get noticed if he's around D.C. with a giant knee brace and, and crutches. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, all right, Katie, next one is if you could get the, an exclusive from anybody where they 100 percent spill the beans, every question you ask they're going to answer truthfully who who would you choose is this like a hockey player or just like anybody anybody i like i like this being a, a living person only question but i know yes. i know you've allowed okay. this to be a living or dead question yeah we can go live i mean living makes makes sense right now we can i'll i'll reword it for uh dead or living next time <laughs> let's go living on this one Whose business do I want to know the most? It's what I think of. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a tough one. I, I, I always typically go sports related because I'm always curious what what it's like for somebody else in a different sport, yeah. um, or any sort of big scandal or whatever you really want to know about. But, but there could be some interesting things with in the business world too, which I think would be kind of neat. This is hard. This is kind of a hard one. Do you need a pass? We can go on to the next one. I'm not going to pass one. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with like a random one. And I might want to talk to Pete Davidson and have him tell me all the secrets of the Kardashians. Actually. (laughs) That's actually really, if after all your hesitation, that's a good one. Yeah. I was kind of waffling on it. I was like, can I come up with something better? No, that's what I'm going with. Look, the, 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 the ultimate truth serum one is Donald Trump, right? The ultimate one that if you wanted to, to have, break the biggest story on earth, that's it. Yes, that would be that would be pretty amazing. I think a lot of people would tune into that or read that one. <laughs> so, so I think one of our, our previous guests said Michael Jordan with the gambling situation, right? With the yep. whole thing in the, in the 90s and retiring and his dad. Uh, that's yeah. that's a fascinating. That, that's a 30 for 30 in the future. Yes, absolutely. I think I think that'd be great. I think I think Tiger Woods would be awesome with the car yeah, accidents too. and all that stuff going on. There's a lot of good ones out there. Um, okay, next one here. Um, I hope you're a dessert person, and if you are, what what would your favorite dessert be? Um, I don't know if it's a dessert, but they have these at the. There's this place up in the in Glacier called Polbridge, and they have a mercantile there, and they make they make these amazing baked goods. And there's this pastry called a huckleberry bear claw. Ooh, yep. Yep. It's not really a dessert, but it could be. That's a dessert. Okay. It's I, delicious. I, I, I think, I think if it's sweet, it can be a dessert, right? We get, we get, um, yeah. we're known for huckleberries and fl- the flathead cherries that grow along the lake. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like that. I love bear claws. So huckleberry bear claw. Love it. Mm-hmm. Good answer. I'll get one. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to. <laughs> I don't usually turn down a dessert, so I'll have to try that. They're big, too. They're like this big. Perfect. So it's a meal. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so now with temperatures rising, getting into summer here, what would be your thermostat temperature? What do you like to keep keep the house at? Is it is it a warm house? Is it a cold house? We have a split in our household with... Uh, with what we like warm and cold so i'm curious what's your temperature um right now my it's not very warm out right now so it's at 73 but i turn it down down lower because i live on the third floor of an apartment building and it gets i've already noticed with the temperatures going up here that it's getting it gets hotter up the higher up you are yeah so i mean in the middle of summer probably like 68 mm-hmm. 69 maybe yeah, I would say. What's what's your split, Carl? I like it cooler. What, Carl? What's your, what, what's your what's your your family disagreement on this? Well, so Jody, who lives with us, she's from Nova Scotia. She loves it really, really warm. Like she would have the house at like seventy six if it was up to her. And I'm the opposite. I love it freezing cold. So we kind of go back and forth. She's the same way. She she's she's on the the top floor of the house, so it gets a little bit warmer up there. So she kind of likes that, but. We're always kind of, you know, everyone's always bundled up and I'm just shorts and t-shirt all the time. And I try and get it down to 68 if I can and, and just cool everybody. But it's, you know, ongoing battle. Yeah, my, my, yeah, my, I, my parents' house was at 78 last weekend when I was visiting them. So, because uh, my, my dad's 75, my mom's 68, and my dad really likes it warm because I guess your, your skin obviously gets thinner. So 78 was hard for me. I don't even like my heat up that high in the dead of winter. <laughs> no, 78, 78 is a lot. 
and like is... all part and my window has been open like i when it gets cool at night like a lot of houses here like don't have air conditioning just because it doesn't get like it's not super warm all the time but like like i my, my window's open like all the time now that it's like warm so i'll have like a fan on and then that but also air conditioning yeah <laughs> that's yeah. awesome um okay last one this question's in honor of me going to watch top gun the other day and freaking loving it it was so good so i want to talk about top, next episode before we bring books on i want to talk about top gun we, we don't have yes. time today but i want next week i want to do the top gun review please um so do you what, what is your favorite movie or tv show my favorite movie like does it like all time or like what i've seen recently let's go all time Ooh, um i've seen a lot of movies um off the top of my head um one of my favorite movies that i can just pop on and watch like anytime or when it's on tv i'll just watch it is uh the lord of the rings the fellowship Ooh. of the ring it's yeah. just a great movie. Like you don't need to watch any of the other ones, but and it's a pretty long movie too. Yeah, and I've I was a really cool teenager, and I had the extended version and <laughs> watched that. Had lots of friends. <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome. If, if okay. you're gonna say TV show, I thought but, you were gonna because we were you, you and oh, I were texting about Thirty Rock last night. Yes, I was gonna say also TV shows. My two like favorite ones that I'll watch anytime is Thirty Rock and of the x-files oh yes <laughs> with Mulder, scully and Mulder. <laughs> people go on sasquatch hunts out here so that's one of my goals is to go on a sasquatch hunt that's so good i used to rock an x-files shirt at school i love that show too <laughs> you just earned extra bonus points for that one good job <laughs> um okay so let me just do a quick tally here sunsets the word classy pete davidson which i'm sure a lot of people would also like Huckleberry Bear Claw, never had it. Love Bear Claws. 73, Fellowship of the X Files. Okay, that brings you, by my calculations, to 120 points. 120 points. Let me see, just quickly, quick scan. It ties you with JJ Reagan, who we had on somewhat recently, or did I just <laughs> add him recently? Anyways, it ties you with JJ. So, congratulations on 120. Pretty respectable score. Ooh. And congratulations, Katie, and, and, and thanks for joining us on All's Caps. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> and everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, next week uh, on All's Caps, uh, we'll be joined by Brooks Orpic and Carl and I will talk about Top Gun, which we both saw and loved. Uh, stay tuned for that, and thank you very much for listening.